again, Rogue Sun issue number three is written by Ryan Parrott, with art by Abel and Francesco Mortarino, colors by Chris O'Halloran, and letters by Becca Carey. And this book begins with the immediate aftermath of Dylan's battle with the vampire werewolf hybrid, aka Billy Blood Moon, as his half-sister Ari takes them to an antique shop run by a woman named Dottie Perrin. It's here that Dylan learns Dottie's true role is the imprisonment of villains that Rogue Sun brings in, of which she achieves through magic and traps the villains in little crystals that are then placed on a chandelier. With the situation taken care of, Dylan now begins looking into the death of Marcus, beginning at the site of his demise. Dylan discovers that Marcus has the power to manifest memories and gets a look at the one that killed Marcus. Marcus then says their next lead will be to question Brock, as Marcus recounts a conversation with him just before his death about someone that Brock knew that did something bad. This is cause enough for Dylan to look into it further where, in Brock's room, they discover a few thousand dollars and an address. Dylan rushes to the location to see Brock talking with a strange creature, a creature that once is aware of Dylan, believes Brock set him up and attacks. Dylan manages to fight him off until he is told that this creature is a witch doctor and that Brock contacted him for something called Death Sage. The witch doctor then departs, leaving Dylan with the words, the killer he seeks is closer than he thinks. It's right after that Brock gets angry as Dylan quickly deduces that Brock intended to resurrect Marcus in some fashion. The two then have a conversation where Dylan realizes how broken Brock is without his father. And Dylan cheers him up by saying that he'll give him the sunstone when he's older. Meanwhile, back with Dottie, she's going through her nightly routine and talking to the villains in the crystals when she realizes that the one containing someone named Demonica was missing. And it's then that we get the reveal that Ari took it, as we see her striking a deal with Demonica, with her plan being to steal the Sunstone. We then shift to the issue's epilogue, where we find Billy Blood Moon as he frantically searches for a way out of the cornfields that he's in. He comes to a door, and once open, he sees this realm of craziness, and then, Rogue's son as a scarecrow, of whom asks Billy if he's ready to begin his rehabilitation. And I'll admit, this is a series that is getting better and better with each passing issue. One of the things that this issue definitely takes strides on moving forward is the world building. Because in past issues, you know, we were definitely getting a lot of characterizations on you know, all of our players in this game and stuff like that. But this one definitely takes a lot more time when it comes to just sort of giving us information on things like what happens to the villains that Rogue Sun defeats. Because given the fact that, you know, they're usually either super powered or demonic beings, standard prison just isn't a way to go. Enter Dottie, who's one of Rogue Sun's partners and is like, yeah, yeah, I'll take those villains and put them in these tiny little crystals and stick them on a chandelier. They ain't going anywhere. And then of course, at the end of the issue, learning of the purpose of these crystals is that they are essentially trapped in these like little pocket dimensions and stuff. And it's all about their rehabilitation, which does make me wonder if any villain has actually been rehabilitated in this way. That would actually be kind of cool if like, say in a future issue, someone that was, let's say one of Marcus's villains comes and helps Dylan. And then of course, just getting to see like other mystical creatures in this world, specifically, the witch doctor because for all intents and purposes he was kind of gross and muddy and you know just seemed to really be quick to anger it's just like whoa 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 you said you were coming alone now there's other people you set me up guy i'm just gonna attack and even still i found him intriguing you know this is a character that can help people communicate with the dead you know i mean that could be a very useful skill and I'm actually wondering if we're gonna get to see him again if he's going to become a player in the story in any fashion. So again, world building, definitely an A+. Then of course, one thing that happens with characterizations that I think is a huge step forward is giving Dylan more layers than just angry kid with a chip on his shoulder that's also basically a bully at school. Because I'll admit, out of two issues, it was starting to get a little tiresome, but here, 
The story slows down, takes a moment, and gives Dylan this moment with Brock, which was, you know, it was a very heartfelt moment. And I was, you know, sitting there thinking to myself, you know, here's Dylan comforting a child who, for all intents and purposes, you know, is the other son of the man that abandoned him and, you know, seemingly got all of the love and attention that Dylan probably craved himself, but of course, you know, is just too jaded to admit it. And even still probably harbors some envy towards Brock and even Ari maybe. But again, the fact he just takes a moment to sympathize with Brock was, you know, very good step forward for his character. And it's these small acts of kindness that I think are what's gonna end up, you know, really blossoming real change for Dylan moving forward. Because as we know with superheroing, punching the bad guys is just part of it. Compassion is another very important component to making a good superhero. But while Dylan definitely got some leaps forward, Marcus is still coming off as kind of a dick. I mean, not only was he just like, yeah, so, you know, I had this conversation with my son that's you know, kind of suspicious, and I'm thinking that, you know, he may have helped orchestrate my death in some fashion, and then finding out that Brock didn't have any involvement in it, and he was actually disappointed. Not so much in the fact of, yeah, yeah, I, I really want my son to be guilty, it's just more so of, that was our best lead, and I was kind of just hoping it was that just so we can wrap this investigation up quicker. And I'm just sitting there reading the page like, bro, bro, I mean, you should be happy right now. You should be going, yeah, yeah, there's no way my son's a killer or, you know, conspires with killers. But instead, he was just, just disappointed. Do you love your children, Marcus? Oh, and I did want to throw out there, too, that this book also definitely, over the course of, I would say... The first two issues really were kind of building up, you know, Brock potentially being involved. Like, I had a, a suspicion that, you know, one or the other was involved, and the book was definitely kind of favoring towards Brock, especially with as, like, stoic as he's been over the course of the two issues. And so when we got to here, and Dylan asks Brock, hey, so what were you trying to tell your dad the night that he died? And Brock was just like, oh yeah, my buddy just lit some lady's cat on fire. Which then prompted Dylan to say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, get, I'm getting a message from uh, from from our dad. It's, uh, uh, oh yeah, kick that kid in the nads next time you see him. I think it was great tension relief. And the added bit with kicking the kid in the nads was funny. If you're gonna be the fist of justice, gotta start young. Wait a second, is this a cult? But now let's talk about Ari, because yeah, turns out she's the one that's guilty of, well, something. I don't think she herself was Cataclysm, but she definitely gave Cataclysm the information he needed to take out Rogue's son. Because that girl wants that sunstone. Ooh, what does she want it for? What nefarious schemes or plans does she have? Oh, uh, I mean, well, we'll have to keep reading to find out. But again, this just opens up a whole new can of questions and possibilities for the story moving forward. Because now that we know what her objective is, we need to find out the why. And even when, specifically, when did she flip her lid? Like, is it something she's been planning since she was like six or... You know, did she not go all dark side until, you know, puberty or something? Or is it all just more of a recent thing for her? And I think that when we do get the reveal, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Probably even relatable or sympathetic. When it comes to the art, I think it is still really good here. I think one of the standouts to me this particular issue were the color choices and all of, you know, the swapping colors just based on the environment and whatnot. You know, when we were in the swamp with the witch doctor, it was all very, like, just brown and muddy. Dottie's place had this, like, calm purple tone going on. But by far, the craziest part of the story had to be in the uh, blog where Billy Blood Moon just rips open that door and just sees all of that insanity. And it's then, at the top of the page, I looked up and I thought to myself, Sauron? 
Is that you? What the hell are you doing out of Mordor, guy? You look at that fiery eye up there and you tell me that does not remind you of Sauron. Because here in the prison, the great eye is forever watchful. So in the end, I think the story is great. I think the art's great. Dylan is getting development for the better. And Ryan Parrott is setting us up for what I think is going to be one hell of a confrontation with his half-sister. I'm just saying, I'm here for it. And with that, I'm going to give Rogue Son issue number three a nine out of 10. So Rogue Son issue number three, what did you think about this book if you've read it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I'd love it if you smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. All right, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.